So, so welcome everyone to this, uh, this edition of the BRAG seminar, Brazilian Algebraic Geometry Seminar. It's a great pleasure to, to introduce our speaker today, João Pedro dos Santos from uh, Paris 6. And he will tell us about algebraic connections on trivial bundles and Galois groups. Please, João Pedro. Okay, thank you very much for the kind invitation and the uh, possibility to talk uh, in this uh, beautiful seminar. And uh, I'm uh, the, the topic I picked uh, is, um, is something which I found out uh, some some time ago, and I and I I really enjoy its simplicity because uh, it was a it was surprising to me that such a thing could exist in order to compute uh, complicated objects in, in in such a simple fashion. So um, that's um, the theme of this talk. And uh, hopefully it will be uh, quite accessible to anyone. So okay, let me start. So I start with this uh, this origin of um, what uh, what the idea behind everything is. So this, this is a historical introduction. So um, uh, let me start with a polynomial and two variables like that. And then uh, one thing you can do is uh, you compute the a Galois group of this polynomial as uh, an element of this um, extension here. Okay, so this is a very simple uh, uh, maneuver. And uh, the question that the uh, geometers started asking right uh, from the beginning is that how do you determine this thing from the geometry of the situation? And uh, this is uh, something which I learned from Abianca reading his paper, so this is not very um, well known as I think it should, but um, here's the method, and it goes back to Jordan apparently, or Heyman. Or... So you, you, you look at the branch points of this function, and uh, you look at the loops around the, the punctured sphere, okay, so you take out the branches, and uh, you take loops around that. And uh, for each loop, you get an um, analytic uh, continuation, okay? So you have its roots and then um, you do analytic continuation like a simple, uh, very simple procedure. And uh, then out of that, you get a representation uh, of the fundamental group of this uh, punctured sphere into the symmetric loop. And uh, well, if you want to uh, trust uh, uh, Bianca, this is due to Riemann. And if you want to trust um, other people, then this is uh, Jordan's theorem. And uh, well, I, I wasn't able to verify none of them. But uh, OK, so this is a theorem of two uh, distinguished mathematicians. And, um, and uh, it's quite, uh, quite simple and quite beautiful, I think. So now let me move on to uh, <clears throat> the the theory which interests me uh, a little bit more, and uh, it's uh, this differential Galois theory. Okay, so uh, differential Galois theory has its beginnings in uh, trying to uh, transpose uh, Galois theory to uh, the theory of differential equations. So uh, once you have a, a, a linear differential equation like that, okay. Uh, you are, I mean, for simplicity, I take coefficients in the of x. And uh, so these guys, Picard and of course Lee, and well, they uh, wanted to construct a Galois theory for the solutions of uh, this equation. Okay, so it means that uh, how do you understand the permutation of solutions? So uh, let me run through the basic construction just out of, um, out of a general introduction. So uh, I construct the splitting field, you know, I put in all the all the necessary solutions, right? And I force the, the, the these variables to be solutions. Uh, so this is the analog of constructing Galois, uh, Galois splitting fields, right? You put in the solutions. And then uh, you it's different from the case of um, usual Galois theory. The, the result you get is not really uh, already a field, so you have to kill an ideal, so just some technicality. But once you do that, and then you take the fraction field, 
what you get is a, uh, is a, a nice, uh, beautiful field, and this is usually called the picard vissure field of the equation. And uh, once you do that, you can go on and define the Galois group of this, uh, this equation, which is just the, the automorphism group of this extension. And uh, I only uh, pay attention to those uh, equations which uh, preserve DDX. Okay, so uh, the, the automorphisms which uh, commute with um, uh, so, so preserves, uh, I get preserves, uh, DDX. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So okay, then uh, just just by uh, construction, you have a solution in this field, right? This field has a, your equation has solutions because I did it like that, and uh, it just so happens that for every uh, automorphism of the field, you know, every sigma in the in the group in this deep L, uh, when I act on the solution matrix, you know, this YAG here. I get yet another matrix, which is also a solution, and then it takes, it's not very difficult to see that the way you pass from one to another is by multiplication by a matrix. Okay, so you have the C sigma, which is a constant, I mean, I, how, how do I know that uh, two matrices are related by just something which is constant is just because uh, you do the exercise and you differentiate where you have to differentiate, and this uh, C sigma is uh, is uh, constant. Very well. Then uh, from there you see that this D gal is a subgroup of matrices. Okay, and uh, that's um, very important because it's just not an, uh, an abstract group anymore. It has some more uh, topological structure. And uh, then you also prove without much effort that this is uh, the risky closed. Okay. So this is a very classical con uh, construction and goes back to um, Picard and Vissio. And then uh, people had to work out their way through algebraic, linear algebraic groups in order to define these things correctly and, and be able to, to do a, a proper theory uh, with, uh, with these objects. So. Well, then uh, at this point, I uh, try to review the theory in uh, two, uh, two ways. Uh, through the fundamental group and the monodromy, which is, of course, a, it goes back to Riemann and very old thing. And then something more modern, which is the Tanakan categories, which uh, is a uh, uh, theory uh, written down by one of Grothendieck's students, uh, Saavedra. Okay. So uh, before moving on, I just need some more uh, elbow room. You know, instead of just working with the uh, differential equations, okay, so we are all geometers here, and uh, so we, we we need some more some more space. So I take a non-singular variety, okay, uh, either complex analytic or algebraic over a field of characteristic zero, okay, for the time being, and uh, for a vector bundle on that. Okay, which I, I mean, just a sheaf, a locally free sheaf. Uh, I say that a connection is this uh, operator, okay? So this uh, operator, which goes from sections of E to this uh, forms with coefficients in E, and it's K linear, of course, uh, respects a multiplication by K and satisfies a Leibniz rule. Okay, so it means that if you, if you contract here, this, this uh, with with the differentials on the uh, right hand side, then you get the real derivations of, uh, of uh, sections of E. Okay. So very, uh, very concretely, so I get my theory back. So this is, I'm not just making up generality, I get my theory back if I take this matrix, e, uh, matrix with the coefficients in C of double and C of X and the uh, rational uh, functions. And uh, I produce a connection on, on, on the trivial bubble, okay? And uh, using this matrix, so the connection is given by this rule, which is here, okay? So I just uh, use the, the, the matrix to, to tell you what to do with the, the, the global sections. And uh, I extend everything by Leibniz rule. And uh, just a, a simple calculation shows that uh, finding sections which are killed by 
Nabla amounts to finding solutions of this equation. Okay, so this is how you uh, recycle this theory into a more robust one in terms of um, vector bundles and connections. Okay, so now just a little word about integrability, which uh, is in order. So of course, over C, integrable means uh, that you can integrate. I mean, so we have, uh, uh, because of, of uh, Frobenius's theorem, you have uh, existence and unicity of, uh, of uh, solutions. And uh, this means that if I take this sheaf of horizontal sections, I mean, this, this guy here, E nabla, is the sheaf of solutions, if you want. And this is locally constant. I mean, once you fix the, the section at uh, some point, then uh, you will always get, uh, you, you, you cannot go anywhere different. So this means that once you fix the initial values, the solution is determined in a neighborhood uh, all over. Okay. So, uh, but in general, I mean, I just want integrability since we want to do algebra also. So in general, integrability just means that uh, when you compose twice this thing, you get zero. Okay. So you do a uh, nabla twice and uh, it gives you zero. Very good. Okay, then, well, the, these objects uh, make a, uh, build up a, a very um, nice uh, category, which is category of integrable connections. Uh, so differential equations, equations differentiais, okay, so speaking in, in another language. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, you have this category of integrable connections. And of course, I mean, uh, maps between vector bundles have to respect the connection in the diagram, which you can all imagine. Oops. So, okay. Uh, now I go on uh, to, to the, the very classical thing. So it's monodromy. Uh, if I take a complex manifold, okay. And I take my connection which I assume that it's integrable without uh, saying very much. So locally, there's no problem. I can integrate everything. It's very easy. And uh, well, I take a loop about uh, some point and I cover the, the, the point, uh, the, the image of the, the loop by disks. Okay. And uh, I solve the equations on all these disks. So I find my solutions. So remember that these E nabla is um, uh, locally constant. So I have this E nabla being um, direct sum of uh, these, these uh, solutions. And uh, because of that, whenever I change it from one place to another, the, the matrices, they are all uh, locally constant. Okay, so I mean, very simple thing. And I get the uh, locally constant matrices. Uh, and after making a full turn, okay, I have my loop, making a full turn, I get back uh, with uh, the same uh, coefficients, but the coefficients get multiplied by some matrix, okay, which is a matrix with uh, constant coefficients, with coefficients in C, and that, of course, gives me the monodromy representation, which is a representation of pi 1, so monodromy means that integrability it just uh, accounts for the fact that uh, uh, homotopic paths have the same, uh, give the same uh, base change matrix, okay? So it's not like in differential geometry where you have parallel transport. If you have parallel transport, you go from one place to another, then the curvature of the, of the space will, will give you a change, even if the, the paths are homotopic, okay? So, but this, this is not the same thing. Uh, okay, so you got a representation, and this is the monodromic representation. <clears throat> and then it comes uh, what is called the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence, which I mean means not not very much uh, because what is Riemann and Hilbert had to do in there, so uh, it's not very clear. But uh, well, this is an equivalence of categories and uh, in the complex complex. So okay, so now we move on to this more. Uh, um, more uh, uh, abstract setting, and uh, I take I give myself a field, and I give myself a k-linear abelian category. Okay, so my category is um, 
is, is t, is denoted by t. And uh, I give myself a tensor product on the category. So uh, of course it's, I want the, this is what's called monoidal symmetric, okay? So it's a bilinear and it satisfies a bunch of axioms, which is saying that it's commutative and associative and so on and so forth. I won't bother you with all the details, but it has a tensor product. And then I choose also uh, an embedding. So I suppose that this category at the end is just a, a category of vector spaces, okay? So this embedding uh, it, it's, uh, amounts to the choice of a base point. Fair enough. So, well, as I said, that there are some hypotheses which you have to, um, which you have to leave aside and I'll not talk too much. And uh, the theorem, uh, of Saavedra is that there is exists an affine group scheme, okay, pi of t, such that my category t is just the category of representations of pi. Okay, so this is uh, this pi, of course, is constructed like uh, Grothendieck. He constructed the tau fundamental group. Just take some automorphism group. Of the um, of the fiber functor in this case is this omega here. Okay, so omega is my um, my point, and uh, and uh, this group scheme here pi is the automorphism group of the functor omega. Okay, so what you have to do you have to prove that it's representable, and then that gives you this theorem and so on and so forth. But here uh, it's all over field and no no restriction in k whatsoever. So. Okay, uh, well, for those who don't do this all the time, what is an affine group scheme? If you are somewhat annoyed by that, you just think of that as a, a series of a, a limit of a linear algebraic groups, you know, subgroups of some GLN, which are given by uh, Zariski closed things. And then you just uh, put them all together and uh, you uh, go for the limit, you pick the limit. So this is what an affine group scheme is. Okay, well, the problem is, of course, is that pi is usually very large. I mean, this is just the, as, as you were doing a, a Galois theory, you know, and uh, uh, if you were doing a Galois theory, you would have the, the absolute uh, Galois group, okay, and uh, this is very big, and you cannot do very much with it, so you have to truncate it. And you get what I call the Galois Tanaka group of the thing. So you take one object in T and you define, I mean, don't, don't pay too much attention to this, this, this equation. It's just a, a silly definition. It's just saying that I, I take the category which is stable under tensor product of uh, stable under direct sums and it's a billion and contains E. Uh, the check here is the jewel, so this is one of the conditions which I left out. Usually, it has, has to be left out. And uh, you uh, take this category, which is now stable by tensor products, kernels, co-kernels, and jewels. Okay, so, so this category goes into the machine, so, and uh, by the theorem, it becomes isomorphic to some category, okay? of some group, some affine group. And this is the Galois Tanaka group of E. So it's completely abstract and depends on omega and depends, of course, on of the category and the object. The big advantage is that uh, it's not a group scheme anymore. It's now it's a linear group. And uh, just, just to be sure, uh, when I say linear is, subgroup of GLN, okay? I, I, I don't mean reduced, just to, just to clear things up. And, uh, and uh, why, why it's linear? It just turns out that the, I mean, E itself, the object E, is a representation of, of, of pi, okay? Because the representations and the, the, the objects are the same. So E is an object, which is a representation, and then it just turns out that the, the map, the representation of pi of t inside the GL uh, and corresponding to E is a closed embedding. Okay, 
So pi of e is just none other than uh, uh, the image, the closed image of, um, of this uh, representation. Okay. So, uh, so uh, you, you just should, should uh, make a point here. Note how this looks like this, uh, this, this uh, Human Hilbert theorem. It's just building up this analogy saying that this pi is the same thing as the fundamental group, but we will work in contexts in, in cases where there is no fundamental group, but uh, you have to work with this pi instead of the topological one. Okay, so uh, some examples of this thing. Uh, if I take G an uh, affine group scheme, and uh, I'm sorry, that's in French, and uh, T is a wrap, uh, then I get uh, back my G. Right, so uh, nothing happens. Uh, what happens if I take an abstract group, right? So I take this T, and now I have this abstract group, rep K of gamma. Uh, and uh, how do I construct it uh, in in concrete terms? And uh, the way I mean topologists do it like that. Uh, you look at gamma and you look at all representations into some GK, so all homomorphisms into some uh, GK, such that the image is dense. Okay, it's a risky then. So you build up this 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 bunch of people, you know, a bunch of uh, groups, and now pi of t is just a limit. I mean, this is. For the topologist, is very nice because it should I mean pure, pure uh, category theory. Uh, and this guy is called the algebraic hull of gamma and gamma alge. And uh, well, it, it just turns out that I found out later on that Hochschild and Mostov they considered this guy also before before Grothendieck actually. So uh, well, this is a very uh, very interesting object. Okay, very good. So a uh, very baby example, take your simplest group, okay, simplest field, and uh, you take the whole, and the whole is just a, a commutative group, which is a, 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 an affine space, a GA, okay, so it's the C, C is a GA, times a torus, and the word torus is somewhat um, uh, too cool, too, uh, too simple, but it, it's a diagonal group scheme. It means that it's a bunch of copies of GA, which, in which you, sorry, GM, and you, and, and you take a limit, okay? But it's, a, it's very big, so it has infinitely many uh, linearly independent characters. Okay, so this is a very simple example, and then here's a more exotic and uh, uh, example. So you take the famous Higman group, so this is uh, this group that uh, has no finite quotients, okay, well, except the trivial one. <laughs> and uh, so you take the Higman group. So this is this uh, this guy. And uh, there is a theorem of Grothendieck that says that uh, it's uh, delta alge is zero. Okay, so you lose, you do lose information when you do this uh, this business. Okay, very good. Then there is another example which is uh, important in this in this talk. And uh, if you take a Lie algebra, then you have also a category of representations of the Lie algebra. And uh, now you want to construct uh, you want to construct your your group, your pi of t, but you just uh, want to do it like Hochschild did uh, and be much less categorical. Okay. So uh, what he did, and uh, it's pretty straightforward, you take the enveloping algebra, okay, of U of G, so the universal enveloping algebra is this, and um, you uh, take this uh, restricted dual, okay? So what happens with the enveloping algebra is that it's an algebra, but it's also a co-algebra, so if you take the restricted dual, what you get, you get multiplication there, 
okay, from co-multiplication, so it has a multiplication in the other way around. So now in UG not, you have uh, multiplication, which is given by, uh, you see, this, this U here, this, this, this part, U tensor 1 plus 1 tensor U is the co-multiplication on the, on the enveloping algebra. And uh, you also have a co-multiplication, which is the dual of the usual multiplication. So this gives you a Hopf algebra, and Hopf algebras are affine group schemes. Okay, so here's your pi uh, from this point of view. Very good. Now, uh, these are all concrete examples where you can say that you are just uh, replacing something which is simple, like a Lie algebra by another bright group scheme, by a group scheme. So you are replacing the simple by the complicated. And uh, now let me try to take something complicated and make it into something simple. So I take a field of characters, it's zero, and uh, my connected uh, scheme over K. So I look at my category of differential equations. Okay, so remember what these are. These are just uh, uh, vector bundles with, um, uh, with uh, connections. Okay. And I notice that uh, whenever I have an arrow between uh, two objects, uh, it just turns out that the uh, rank of the, 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 the maps between the, the fibers is uh, constant, okay? So this is really a map of vector bundles, okay? So it's not just a map of sheaves, okay? Uh, this is because uh, this, this uh, F, it has to respect the connection. So uh, this allows me um, to say that the kernel and the co-kernel are vector bundles also, okay? So of course, uh, if you have a usual map between two sheaves and you have its kernel and its co-kernel, nothing guarantees that they will be vector bundles, but in this case, they are because of uh, the integrability. And uh, this uh, gives me the structure of an abelian category, which, uh, will now be a Tanakian category, which will come into uh, the, the, the realm of uh, applications of my, um, of my theorem, okay? So, uh, I give myself a point, x naught, and uh, now I notice that <clears throat> taking the fiber at this point is an exact and faithful functor, okay? Uh, exact, and that's just because of this uh, previous remark, the remark that says that the, uh, a narrow between two vector bundles is always a map of vector bundles, okay? So kernel and co-kernel are, are locally free. And uh, this um, allows me to put the whole category of differential equations uh, inside of uh, vector spaces. And I then get the right to apply my theorem. So now I start with uh, equation, uh, differential equations and I get a group scheme, which is the replacement of the fundamental group in this particular case, okay, in the algebraic case. It's the differential fundamental group. Very well. So sorry, uh, maybe there are questions. Should I? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So let me go back to the abstract examples and and give you a taste of what these uh, uh, um, these these um, these uh, groups look like. Okay. Uh, in the Galat Tanaka setting. So before, what what was I doing? I take a category and I produce an affine group scheme. Okay, so very well. And then I said that these affine group schemes they're just too big to be of uh, to be uh, understandable. So I gotta chop it up, and uh, I chop it using this Galois Tanaka. So it's the analog of the Galois group of finite extensions, if you want. Okay, fine. And uh, then I gave you a series of examples, and these examples were abstract groups and uh, Lie algebras and so on and so forth. And now let me go through the Galois Tanaka groups of these theories. So for an abstract group, I have a representation, which is an object of uh, the category of representations, or gamma, of course. 
and uh, the Galois Tanaka is just the closure of the image. Okay, so now this abstract category of representations, I get these uh, these uh, groups, these uh, concrete, as you want, uh, algebraic groups. Very well. Now then, there is this uh, other theory which I explained, which was the the theory of Lie algebras. Okay. And uh, for Lie algebras, uh, you have a representation, so it means that you have an object in the category of uh, representations, which means that you get a linear algebraic group, the Galois Tanaka group of this row. And uh, so, what should it be? Well, in the case of abstract groups, it was the closure of of the image of the group, and here it will be the closure of the image. Since I'm not working with the group, uh, with the Lie algebra, it will be the closure, but of course, it will be the closure in this Lie theoretical sense. So it's what the people call the algebraic whole of the image Lie algebra. So my Lie algebra goes inside uh, uh, this GLE, okay? Rho goes inside GLE, so it gives me a, a, a Lie algebra inside the GLE. And then I take the closure in the sense that I take the smallest linear algebraic group containing this Lie algebra. Okay, so this is called the, the so if you go to Demasio Gabriel and, and this is what they call the, the, the algebraic envelope of a Lie algebra. Okay. Okay, um, so to end, uh, let me uh, then, uh, so recall I, I talked about abstract groups the algebras, abstract category of differential equations. And uh, of course, the Galois Tanaka group in that setting will be the uh, Degal. So, so assume that you are, you are in the setting of the beginning of the lecture. So uh, X is just P1 uh, minus a bunch of points. And you have your differential equation given by uh, the system of, 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 uh, of uh, differential system. And then, of course, your pi of this objects of these objects uh, will be the Galois group, which I started with. So it means that the Tanakan theory recovers the 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 differential Galois of the beginning. Okay. So this is just to see that everything is up and running very well. So now I can uh, make this. Uh, uh, definition. <clears throat> if uh, K is, uh, uh, in all generality, if I have an, a variety, a smooth variety, and I have K a field of characteristic zero, and uh, then I can, uh, if I have a connection, so remember connections are just uh, analogs of uh, differential equations, so now I define my Degal as being Pi of Nabla, okay. Uh, sorry, pi of, of the Galois Tanaka group of this uh, object, okay. So, of course, so now here you, you see that this, this uh, pi uh, Nabla is defined in, in, a, in a quite an abstract way, I mean, by, by means of category theory before it was defined by means of, of a, some sort of Galois theory. Now it's by category theory. So you may say, well, it's very hard to compute this guy. And the answer is, of course, it is. And uh, you can do it with analysis uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as follows. So if I give myself a smooth algebraic variety, then I have my, uh, what you call it, the jordan Riemann version of that, which is just a combination of Gaga. Okay, so Gaga says that uh, on the algebraic side and on the analytic side, it's the same thing because it's, it's uh, uh, projective and, uh, uh, and algebraic and you are over C. And then you come in and you use the monodromy, which is uh, this, this uh, uh, Hilbert theorem, and you say that is uh, an equivalence. Okay. So in particular, as soon as I have a, 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 a connection on a smooth projective, variety, okay, over C, I can compute the Degal if I know the monodrome. Okay. 
well, then of course there is uh, there is uh, something which you can do. Uh, you you can always say to me, well, you know, uh, 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 projective stuff. Uh, usually, differential equations have singularities. Then you have to deal with that. And of course, you can um, deal with that. But then you have to talk about these uh, regular singularities. And uh, um, but uh, it, it does generalize. Okay. So you can still obtain this sort of Jordan Riemann theorem uh, if you instead of looking at uh, uh, connections which are uh, defined on proper algebraic varieties, you uh, allow some sort of singularity, I mean regular singularity or what uh, logarithmic singularities. Okay, so you can still do that, but I I won't say anything else. Okay. But uh, of course, the problem is that uh, it's very hard to compute monodromy because you have to give names to functions which are solutions to differential equations, which you just don't know what they are. I mean, they are power series and, and very, very hard to compute. Well, then uh, the idea to uh, to try to simplify this 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 computation is is the following: uh, in case you simplify your vector bundle. I mean, on the compact case, you have these vector bundles, which are, you may imagine that there are many vector bundles, that vector bundles are not easily uh, free on, on compact spaces and proper spaces. Uh, and then um, you have to deal with uh, connections defined on things which are already complicated. So the idea of studying connections in general comes with this lower level of complexity, which is the vector bundle himself, which might be complicated. I mean, some stability here, there, so it get, gets tricky. And the, the, the key idea now is to throw away this information and concentrate on trivial connections. And uh, I mean, in the beginning, you might say, well, yeah, is this a good idea? And the first time I, I heard this, I said, well, I, I don't know. And then when I found this theorem, and just wow, this is so so nice that yeah, it's a, it's it's a good idea. And um, uh, so <clears throat> so you take a um, x proper and smooth, okay? So over your few. Well, in particular, I mean that there are no global sections. I mean they're just constant sections, okay? Uh, and uh, you you follow you follow this idea you follow the, the 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 principle that yes it is interesting to study connections on free vector bundles and uh, these are differential systems and they give you interesting results and interesting uh, 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 applications okay so let me um, give you just just to give it a name so ed uh, free is differential equations on, on free vector bundles okay simple thing <clears throat> and uh let me try to describe this guy so this is the interesting point in order to describe this this uh ed free things become extremely algebraic and very satisfactory it's very simple so what is now a connection on a free vector bundle i mean it's just okay give yourself global forms you're on a compact spaces you have differentials a connection on that is just a bunch of matrices. Okay, so you have to look at the image of the, the global sections, the, the, the canonical basis. You look at it and you, you get some one forms here. Okay, so you get, I mean, connection on these guys is very simple. Okay, and well, then you have to pay the, the, the price, which is uh, non trivial. And uh, I'm exploring uh, that in the moment, but um, well, life is not uh, easy. So uh, the integrability of the connection is determined by by the two form here and, and commutativity of these matrices so on and so forth. Okay, but uh, never mind. Just uh, the moral is that to give connections on free vector bundles is a very simple thing on proper schemes. Of course, you can argue, I mean, there is this Hilbert's uh, problem, one of Hilbert's problems, which is finding uh, equations on some open subset of the, the, the a fine line with the given monodromy. 
on so which amounts to studying connections on free vector bundles on some open of the projective line and this is a difficult result because there i have many sections on an open space your sections are you have many many uh, holomorphic functions then it becomes a difficult problem but in the case of proper spaces you don't have so many functions <clears throat> and this becomes a much more uh, um, feasible situation okay so how do i describe this category well very easy i take the tensor algebra on the dual forms and i divide it by an ideal okay so at the end of the day represent the, the my category of uh, connections on trivial vector bundle is the category of representations of some algebra which i can explicitly give it to you if i if i had some chalk in the hand okay so and moreover uh just using some some lie algebra stuff this this algebra is just the enveloping algebra of a lie algebra okay so the category of connections on free vector bundles is the category of representations of a certain Lie algebra, okay? And the Lie algebra, of course, is just uh, given by the free Lie algebra on a vector space, and I have to kill some relations. So, well, so this is not a finite dimensional Lie algebra, so it can be very big, but nevertheless, <clears throat> it's uh, simple to describe. Okay, so let me uh, state that. So category of differential equations on free vector bundles is equivalent to uh, to the category of representations of this Lie algebra. And now I just uh, so I now I give myself the following problem, which is how do I compute Galois groups in this situation? So remember, this is my objective. I want to compute Galois groups. And well, I have two things. I have this E in this category of free people, free vector bundles, and I can compute the differential Galois group, I mean the Galois Tanaka group in the category of free. Okay, I'm looking inside of a small category and I compute the differential Galois group in there. And I can compute this group inside a bigger category, inside of ED. One is related to the other, and the question is, what is their relation? And uh, this is the theorem that we prove, uh, that is that they are isomorphic. And uh, uh, I mean, proof is not uh, so, uh, so difficult, so morally what you have to do is to show that, so remember that how, how do you compute uh, Galois group, how do you compute Galois Tanaka groups? So these are the groups associated to some category. So the first category here is the category of sub quotients of, of uh, vector bundles, uh, F, F double prime, okay, such that they are all free. Okay? They are all trivial vector bundles. On the other side, I allow myself to have things which are not free. I mean, I have a free vector bundle, I have a sub bundle with a connection, and uh, I want to know if the sub bundle is also free. Okay, so this is the, the difficulty, and uh, it just turns out that this difficulty is, is, uh, is avoidable. Um, so let me give you the, the proof. Uh, so I only need to show that <clears throat> uh, these free uh, stable by quotients, okay? Meaning that if I have a connection which is the quotient of another connection, then uh, the bigger one is free. Implies that the smaller one is also free. So, okay. So let me write it like that. So I have OR that goes to F, okay? And F is, carries a connection. And this gives me a map uh, in the Grassmann world. Okay, so for every point of x, I get myself a quotient. And uh, of course, f is just a pullback of the, 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 the universal bundle on the Grassmannian. And uh, now comes the, the good point. 
is that for every compact curve, every proper curve inside of X, <clears throat> whenever I pull it back to the curve, it just turns out that the degree of the vector bundle is zero. Why it is zero? Because the, the restriction F restricted to C carries a connection. And on curves, all connections are immediately integrable, okay? Because it's an algebraic curve, so it's one dimensional. And uh, if I have a connection on a curve, it means that the curve has degree zero. Okay. So what happens? So I, everybody knows uh, the um, uh, U is ample, or, or, or uh, uh, that U is ample. And uh, so ample plus degree zero means that uh, the bundle is a point. Okay. So my curve, my curve inside of X is just mapped to a point, and then I, I know that I can connect points by, by curves, by uh, Ramanujan's lemma, and uh, I'm done. Okay, so F is constant, and uh, it must be uh, a trivial vector bond. So uh, the proof of the theorem is like that. <clears throat> so it means it has the following uh, uh, application. Uh, so let, let me go back to the theorem so that, that we, we all see what this is. It says that in order to compute the differential Galois group of a connection on a free vector bundle, I can compute it in the category of connections on free vector bundles. And what is the important fact is that the category of connections on free vector bundles, okay, is very easy to describe. Okay, remember, cat so here it's, it's the point, category of connections on free vector bundles is just representations of some, of some B algebra. So let me go on. So the corollary, corollary is the following. So if I have uh, a connection on a free vector bundle, okay, defined by some matrices, okay, then in order to compute this differential Galois group, all that I have to do is find the smallest subgroup of GLR which contains these matrices. I mean, I, I, it, it, it's, a, it's a recipe, it's a simple recipe to compute uh, uh, differential Galois groups, something which, I mean, um, I, I don't know of anything on, even in the Galois world, which is just so, so simple. I mean, I, you give me a, some sort of equation and you look at it and you say, yeah, the Galois group is like that. So you look at it and you say, yeah, it's trivial, it's not trivial. And you cannot even know if you take a generic polynomial, how can you know it easily if it has a solution or not? I mean, just looking at it. And in this case, it's, it's like that. You just look at it and you find the smallest one containing all these, these uh, matrices and that gives you the French or Galois group. So, uh, well, the proof is, as I said, uh, how do you compute Degal you computed this Galois Tanaka group in the category of differential equations. So, as we showed, the Galois Tanaka group in the category of differential equations is the same thing as the Galois Tanaka group in the category of free differential equations. But the category of free differential equations is just the category of LX modules or representations of some V algebra. Okay. And uh, this Lie algebra is the one giving you these matrices. Okay. So that's it. So uh, 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 <clears throat> a corollary of that is, is the following. Um, so if I take a curve of genus two, okay. So remember that uh, if I have um, I have um, um, should I say my my Lie algebra, my Lx is constructed, let me go back just a little bit, up, 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 Lx. So you see Lx is constructed from global forms or dual of that, okay? In the case of a curve, there will be no relations, okay? Because the relations, they, they come from the curvature. And uh, on a curve, uh, every algebraic connection is, 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 uh, has a zero curvature, okay? This, this is because there are no global two forms. So problem solved, okay? So this is the free Lie algebra. Okay. Back. Yes. So I'm on a curve of genus two, and I give myself a semi-simple group. Okay, connected. <clears throat> and uh, 
the claim is that I can always construct a connection such that the Galois group of that connection is uh, simply uh, H. Okay. And what is moreover something which I which I, uh, I I like is that I can explicitly construct them uh, well at least at least in in case um, at least in case the the semi simple group is not uh, is not uh, is, is split okay so this this is some technical details and uh, I will explain why <clears throat> and uh, how do you do that so very very straightforward you take h you put it inside of gle into some to some some faithful representation and uh, you use this result which is due to uh, kuranishi but uh, you can find the proof also in uh in uh, book okay so you take a uh, uh, the lee algebra is generated by two elements okay. uh, and now, I mean, I just pick any connection. I pick two forms, two uh, one forms, linear, linearly independent one forms on my curve. There exist because the genus is at least two. And I construct this connection like that. And, uh, and well, then the smallest linear algebraic group, which contains A1 and A2, is, of course, H. Okay. Because it, because uh, a one and a two generate the Lie algebra, so it, it must be H. And uh, let me remark that um, so so this is this this remark is to to for the effectivity. Okay, so I'm I'm claiming that uh, moreover I can compute uh, I can compute these things. Okay, it's just not a, not a, a very abstract theorem. It's a is a uh, effective one. And I can show you how to compute these guys in the split case. And uh, so how is that? I mean, I, I take A1. A1 is just one element of the Lie algebra. And I take it outside. I take an, an element in the Cartan subalgebra, OK, which doesn't belong to the hyperplanes given by the roots. So this phi here is, is, is the roots. And I say that A1 doesn't belong to, uh, to the kernel of, of uh, simultaneous roots. Okay, so it, doesn't have the same value on, on simultaneous roots. And uh, A2 is just uh, this, this uh, linear combination of, of, of uh, non-zero elements on the, on the root groups. Okay, so phi is the roots and I, Y uh, alpha are the elements on the, on the root groups, which are non-zero. Okay, so this gives you, I mean, give yourself any split uh, uh, linear algebraic group and uh, you can find these elements with, with the computer, you can do that. Uh, it's just a computation. Okay, so this, uh, well, I guess uh, that's all I have to say. And uh, thank you very much uh, for the attention. Thank you, João Pedro. Uh, are there questions or comments for João Pedro? So I have, a, actually, I have a question. Can you go back uh, to that, that when you described the, um, the category of, uh, of trivial connections, the one that you had that was... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so first, so okay, may, it was not there, but also I have a question there too. So when you have, the, what is this ideal that you have in the end? So this ideal is the one uh, which will uh, uh, kill the 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 the, um, the the A case. Okay, so uh, you need a, for, you can look at this A case, right? Um, with this this form, the, the form will give you the connection the two form of the connection of the of the so you have okay so you have this connection here e so i cannot point i'm pointing to the computer so you have this connection here okay and then the curvature will give you will be something given by these a's uh, al uh, brackets with coefficients on the global two forms uh coming from 
coming from, from this AKAL. So all I have to do is I have to uh, mod them out to assure that the curvature is zero. So uh, it's, uh, it's uh, 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 well, I, I, won't, I won't be able to uh, describe them uh, precisely uh, like that, but I mean, it's just coming from, the, from this, this uh, relations here uh, and, and the coefficients. So if I don't get it wrong, I mean, this, this alternate form, you have some coefficients here, and then you have to mod out um, the elements um, corresponding to these coefficients. Mm -hmm. So for instance, this is telling us that if it say X is a funnel manifold, you don't get anything interesting. So if, so there, if there are no, no one forms, then, then there's nothing. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, the point, yeah, the point is precisely that if there are, there are no one forms, then uh, yeah, you, you can do, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and in, in, you, this, you had this corollary about the genus at least two. Yeah. So what, what happens in genus one? Uh, in genus one, it just happens that the group is abelian. So yeah, you, you can do the same, but then, then I mean, um, uh, where, where was it? Uh, uh, yeah, so, and what will happen is that you will have a, a, a Galois group, which is, uh, it, which is um, uh, an abelian group. So you cannot have semi-simple stuff, but uh, you can also do it uh, like that. I mean, yeah. same thing. At the end, what you get, you just, you, you always get uh, something which is a GA. And I mean, it's either zero or GA, which uh, it's not very, very uh, interesting at the end. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, yeah, you can do it for, for elliptic curves. Too. Okay. Are there more questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Hi, Joao Pedro. Um, can you say a few words about regular singularities? Because it's a bit odd to use this adjective regular for singularity. No, sure. no well, uh, so this, this uh, regular singularities is this, this thing that um, uh, it was discovered by Fuchs uh, 150 years ago, and uh, the the name regular singularity is, is is pretty bad. But at the beginning, it was called a, a weak singularity or a, a point of uh, indeterminacy. But uh, uh, nevertheless, the point is that uh, uh, regular singularities are these singularities which are um, how could I say it? So the the dx dy dx is just a holomorphic thing with a simple pole if you if you go back to the to the to the matrix here so sorry just a second if you go back to the matrix here okay uh, a regular singularity means that uh, a only has uh, simple poles so this is what it is I mean, you have to be careful there because uh, what I'm saying is not really true. You you you, you allow yourself some some change of of, of coordinates. But uh, yeah, the name is terrible, but uh, it's absolutely useless now to, to make any change. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, and can I ask one more question? Maybe uh, what happens in positive characteristic? Because you always assume that the characteristic is zero. Um, then I mean. Uh, in, in general, you can do a theory in, in, in positive characteristic, but uh, here you have to replace this guy by, uh, you have to replace this uh, nabla here, you know, because uh, in positive characteristic, what happens is this, this, this um, uh, locally free sheaves, uh, where you lose, I'll tell you where you lose, you lose, uh, yeah, you lose this point, point here, you know, because if the characteristic is P, I mean, you can have, uh, you, you have ideals, for example, which are invariant under the derivation. I mean, take the, the usual connection, okay, the connection on O, given by D, the, the, the usual form, and uh, you take the ideal X to the P, okay, X to the P is killed by so 
So uh, multiplying by x to the p is a horizontal map. So it means that you, you lose this property that kernel and co-kernel are vector bounds. Then what you have to do in characteristic p in order to recover a theory is that you don't you won't work only with uh, uh, connections. You will have to work with all the differential operators. So if you think about it, uh, connections are just a way of making the derivations, the vector fields, act on uh, on the sections. Okay. So in characteristic P, what you need, you need all the higher derivations, all these Hasse-Schmidt derivations, or if you want uh, 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 differential operators of infinity level to work on that. But then, yeah, you, you can do it, but uh, there, I, I've looked into it, but there is no, there is no simple analog of, of the, the main theorem here. I mean, there, there's just no way. Because uh, why is that? It's because of the following thing. If you if you have vector bundles which are always free for for the the various differential operators, then the connection itself is free. It means that the algebra plays a bigger role in characteristic P. Okay, so but but uh, hopefully that was uh, okay. Thanks. Are there more questions or comments? So if not, let's thank Jean-Pedro again. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.